Hi folks, this is Dr. Don. I want to go over a problem that popped up on the uh, midterm exam and it's about developing a frequency distribution for a data set. I have another video which covers most of this but unfortunately that video began with a problem which did not ask you to determine the upper and lower limits of the class. So I think it's worthwhile to go over this again and show you how to do this step by step. I did mention that some of the academic problems you get in, in a statistics course um, are not really set up to make best use of the technology tools. StatCrunch, for example, doesn't really have a way to calculate all of these intermediate data points. It'll do the uh, frequency distribution, the histogram, lickety split, and it will give you the frequencies, but it won't give you these upper and lower limits very easily. So I want to show you how to do it using basic Excel. Remember if you're in StatCrunch you can click on the little rectangle there and then open your data directly into Excel. And that's what I did. This is the spreadsheet that I use when I'm doing these types of frequency distribution problems and I set them up so that I can reuse them uh, fairly easily. I have a column over here, the A column, where I always put my data, and that's in blue if you followed my series on Excel workbooks. Uh, blue cells indicate inputs, and white cells indicate intermediate outputs. And I use the basic Excel functions to get the count, which is just the count function and the range of that data. And I use the min function to get the minimum number of zero, the max function to get the maximum value, the range is just the max minus the min, which would be 39 in this case. We were given, again, it's in blue, the cell. Five bins is what they wanted. The width is just equal to the range divided by the number of bins, that's 7.8. And then we always round that up to the next highest integer. And I use the roundup function with zero decimal places to get eight. In the next part of my table, I want to get the upper excuse me, the lower, upper, and midpoints for each of these bins. Now the lower begins for bin 1 at the minimum, and then we just go up by the width. So I'm going to equal that cell plus the width over here, the rounded width. And if you remember in Excel, you want to lock down cells that you don't want to move. And I'm going to highlight that D7. You can see with the cursor up there, click F4 adds the dollar signs and that makes that locked down. Now once it's locked down I can just drag that formula down to get my lower limits for the five bins. Since we're dealing with integers, the upper limit for the first bin is going to be equal to the lower limit of the second bin minus one. And that gives me my uh, upper limit for my first bin. And then to get the subsequent ones, we want to take that value and add again our bin width. And we're going to lock it down again with the F4 key. And that gives me my upper bin widths. And then I can just drag that down to get the bin width, upper bin limits for each of the remaining bins. The way I like to get the midpoint is to create a formula in Excel. And it's equal. I start with open parentheses. And that's the upper minus the lower, close the parentheses, divide by 2, and add back to my lower to get that first midpoint. And then I can just drag that formula down to get the midpoints for the other bins. To do the frequencies, we use the Excel frequency function. And what we need to do there, it's a little bit different because it's an array function. We want to drag down and select all the uh, the cells that I want the values for each of the bins plus one in case there's something that falls out. So I'll always go for each of the bins plus one. And then we want to click our frequency formula, F-R-E-Q, and it offers that up. And it says the data array, which is over here, those 20 cells, comma, and the bins array, they want the upper limits for the bins and I'm going to close that. Now the way we in enter this is a little bit different. 
It's Control, Shift, Enter. And that gives us the frequencies for each of the bends. And of course, there's no spillover here. It, it uh, correctly found our, our frequencies for each of the five bends. Our relative frequency is equal to our frequency in that bend divided by the total number, which is my count over here. And click on that, and that's 15. And what I forgot to do is to lock down my count with an F4. And now I can drag this down to get my relative frequencies. And my cumulative frequency, this is something students tend to mess up. They, because it's the next, they think the cumulative is just the addition of these. That would be the cumulative relative frequency. This is cumulative frequency, so I need to accumulate the frequency column. And that's just equal to the first value for that cell. Whoops. And now the next cell is equal to that cell count plus that. And then I can just drag that formula down to get my cumulative frequencies. And that's how you do it. it it's a little bit cumbersome, but uh, once you get the procedure down and save your basic table format, you can reuse it on other problems. So I hope this helps. Mm -hmm.